Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Dunk or Slam, and this video is going to be different from my recent tutorials that I've been posting. Uh, not that I'm done with those, I still have tons of them in mind, tons of videos that I, I would like to make, but uh, today I wanted to try out doing a, a little bit uh, of a longer video than usual. I don't know how long it's going to be, we're just going to play a regular run of Noita, and while I'm playing, I'm going to just be throwing out whatever Noita knowledge I have on whatever is occurring in-game. Uh, it's weird because when it comes to Noita, there's so much stuff to know um, that you really, it's hard to just pick a random topic and rant on it. So I'm just going to uh, rant on whatever we come across in game and it's almost just like a knowledge dump. Just I'm just dropping off a ton of knowledge uh, while I'm playing the game, hopefully, uh, if there's a lot to talk about here. So uh, let's jump into it. And if you if you like this kind of video, let me know in the comments below. Uh, because based on your guys' feedback is how I decide if we are going to do more of these videos. Maybe if you guys enjoy it, we'll do some real, some much longer runs. Maybe even like a sun quest or something. Uh, but yeah, let's test this. Let's do this as like a beta test to see what you guys think of it. See if it's uh, if it's worth pursuing. So uh, right off the bat, I'm gonna check the mods folder. Make sure everything is off. That's for my Twitch integration that I use in my stream. So there we go. All mods are off. We'll hit start a new game and new game. Yes. So I'll probably be ranting quite a bit, so feel free to uh, skip any parts if you already know what I'm talking about. It's maybe old information, whatever, but uh, I just plan to, to, to keep ranting the whole time from start to finish. So let's see if I can keep this up. Uh, right off the bat, I see that I got a spark bolt and a fire bolt uh, wand. So that gives us the option to get an early orb, so I'm going to take that option. Um, Dig a little spot in the mountain there and climb up and we're good to go Hope everybody's doing fantastic and uh, one of the main reasons I wanted to, to make this longer run today Was because we have some snow actually coming to, to Texas and Last time there was snow here uh, Was actually my longest break I've ever taken from streaming which was like I believe it was three days And it was because the power was out. I had no power for for days and since there's snow coming, I doubt it'll be anything crazy. It, hell, it may not even happen, but I figure at the very least I'd like to have a video up on YouTube for the community to give them something to do in case they were interested in maybe watching some Noita while uh, while the snow is happening and I'm not able to stream it. So there's at least this out there for them. I could uh, I could link it link it to them on Twitter and stuff and be like, hey, you can at least watch this run. Uh, but because if you don't know, I stream just about every day on Twitch. Uh, it's where I've learned a lot of my, my Noita stuff. It's not stuff that I've learned on my own, own either, not even close. Uh, whenever I played Noita, I started playing it the very first day of early access. The very first day it was on Steam, at least. And uh, I, I've played it almost every day. Um, I have over 4,000 hours, and people just stop by and drop off Noita knowledge constantly. And I do my best to retain as much of it as I can. And that's why uh, I figured, you know, in a run like this, it's the perfect moment to just play through the game and just kind of throw out whatever comes to mind while I'm playing. Uh, my tutorial videos, I tend to make tutorial videos on things that I feel like are the most useful that can be used in like your average run. But sometimes there's some knowledge that is like, it's so specific that you only really need to know it if you're in this exact situation. Which is what makes this run kind of interesting because it, it, may, it may put us in a situation that is very specific. And, uh, and I can actually talk on it because it'll make sense in the context. Uh, and Oh, by the way, I didn't even mention it. I do it out of habit. So I grab that orb at the start. And that orb at the start, what it does is it makes the boss stronger. And it actually makes me a little bit stronger, too. It gave me 25 HP. And 25 HP, you know, it's not a big deal. But the 25 HP for me is much more beneficial than the you know, a little bit of buff that it gave to the boss. It just gave the boss a little bit more health, nothing too crazy. It did give it a new mechanic though. It'll it'll now have a shield around it because I grabbed that orb. If you do not grab that orb, there is a different kind of shield on the boss, but nothing to be worried about. However, this new shield, I'll talk about it when I get to the boss, but you'll see it whenever I, when I go to fight him. It, it reflects projectiles um, compared to the original one. Um, just deflex them. I don't know if that makes sense. One of them blocks the shots while this one catches them and throws them back at you, I guess is probably the better way to say it. All right, trying to get uh, some digging right now. And this TNT is awesome. Oh my gosh, what a start. Hey, it's important that you show runs like this because sometimes runs go bad. 
And it's important for people to see that, hey, it can happen to anyone. Runs can go terribly. But don't give up on a run. Every run is winnable, and I don't edit, all right? I don't do any editing in my videos, so uh, let's see how this goes. <laughs> I'm already a little nervous. I'm like, oh, God, my first video that I said was going to be a longer run, I'm going to post it. It's going to be shorter than my tutorials. I rant longer than my <laughs> than my run in Noita. Seems good. Uh, but yeah, so I'm, I'm getting messed up here. The reason that it's going so badly is because I, I don't have uh, any water. And that was a huge mistake on my end. What I should have done, and I'll, I'll go ahead and do it now. There are many plays in Noita that are kind of tedious and can be frustrating to, to, to you know remember to do all these small things. But the moment that you skip them, that's whenever you get got in Noita. And uh, what I did here was I cost myself, what was that, easily like 60 health. Uh, but all I had to do is skip up, uh, uh, slurp up <laughs> uh, 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 some water right here. We just scoop it up in our our flask, 3% water. Now that may not seem like a big deal, but with a single pixel of water that we scooped it up, we slurped it up. Now, I, I said slurp, but then I realized you guys may think I'm actually talking about drinking it. You don't, you don't have to drink it. You just scoop it up in the flask, and then you come over to where there is some toxic sludge, which is what we found here and just break that open. And when the toxic sludge pours out, you just pour in your water. And now we have a water flask. This is top priority. And hey, I made this uh, video at least, uh, <laughs> it shows you guys an example of what not to do. Do not skip that uh, that small thing because it can cost you. Uh, most of the time you get lucky and you have a flask that can put out fire, uh, but it is important to know that when you don't find it, you better you better prepare. It's your starter quest. It's the first thing that you should be doing is getting a water flask. All right. So gold isn't really that big of a deal right now. I mean, I'm collecting it, of course, so I'm not just going to leave it on the ground. But it's not my priority. My priority right now is hearts. So that guy right there, if you, if you listen whenever he... I don't know how, how loud the audio is for you. But at least in your game, you can you can hear it as much as well as you would like. You know, crank that audio up. But you'll hear a uh, a shotgun being racked. You hear like a ch ch. That's how I know that shot was coming, and I kind of anticipate it, and uh, and I just jumped. That's that's something that'll become like second nature the more you play Noita. Uh, but it's important that you at least understand that mechanic. Not saying that you'll dodge every shot from the beginning, but after you kind of understand what's going on there, it does become a lot easier. With health this low, 36 HP, uh, the main things that I'm concerned about, ooh, 33 HP, the main things that I'm concerned about are explosives. Because I can nearly get one shot depending on the explosive. So when I see the chance, I delete whatever explosive I come across. And let's get our hands on this up here. Hmm. All right, converting it over. Like I said, just a drip of water, you're good to go. You can shoot it to mix it up. It makes it go faster, you don't have to. Uh, that's not a wand I'm interested in because the wand itself, nothing special. And uh, the spell, Circle of Thunder, I, I don't I don't make many plays with that. I, I'm trying to think of any builds specifically. Um, there is there is some stuff you can do with Circle of Thunder, but no build that I'm excited about. At least right now, maybe one day somebody will show me a really cool build with it and then I'll love it. But for now, nah. Uh, we're still just using the starter wand. Nothing to see here. Nothing too exciting. Hmm. I'm gonna head over to the right side. Uh, it, usually, the pattern that I that I go in when I enter the first level is I I try to make my way to the right. But at the same time, I don't just go directly right. I'll, I'll move in a way that. Whenever I leave the right side, I can leave out in a different path. That way I'm more likely to stumble across any hearts. There's no guarantee that there will be hearts in the first level, but uh, you can at least cover as much of the area as possible so that you know you're not passing up hearts if they did spawn. But there could be zero hearts. There could be six hearts. I don't know. It's uh, You never know on each seed. It's random. And the only thing that it's tied to, as far as I know, if somebody data mines up uh, some, some stuff, they may have no more details. But um, as far as I know, it's just connected to, the, to the, uh, the, the formation. And what I mean by that is 
Uh, I always tell the chat whenever they're they're asking about this is I pick I say picture a, a like a checkerboard or a chessboard, and how it's uh, it's squares right? It's a board made up of squares. Whoop! See, so there's the shotgun shot. That's a dude crazy. It's a board made up of many squares, and each square, just like the map in Noita, is predefined. So each square will have, um, like, it's not like every single pixel in the world is randomly generated. They pre-design squares, and then they have the order of the squares that it puts it puts together. Like, you, you just don't know the order. So, for example, you could see a formation that is in the top left of, uh, of this map here, and then on a new seed, that exact same formation, I mean, like, the way the, way the, the, way the, the explosive spawns, the way the... Um, the I don't know how to I'll, I'll show you a formation and it'll make more sense in a moment But that exact same formation could be at the bottom right or the mid left or it could be anywhere It's just about recognizing the the squares and then from there finding where they spawned So the heart will be tied to those formations. It'll make more sense in a moment when I expand upon it So I have all seeing eye I'd rather not give that up at least right now I'm not like a big fan of all seeing eye. I think it's helpful, but it's not like uh, something that I must have uh, however this firebolt doesn't offer me a ton. So I think I'm going to cough it up for now. Uh, it is nice to be able to kill some enemies quickly with firebolt, but in terms of digging, the uh, the regular bomb is going to be much more useful. And the first zone is all about digging around and, and getting wherever you need to get to. So, oh, I need to scoop up that water. I just realized my flask is running empty. So this guy right here, you can pour water on his head to, to kill him. You don't have to, though. If you, if you pour water on his head, it actually is considered an environmental kill. It doesn't give you the credit, however, it does drop double gold. So, I mean, who cares about the credit, right? If you're in it for, you're in it usually just to get the money or just to, I guess, remove the danger of, of that enemy. So it's, you know, it's not a big deal to, to kill it with water so that you can get that bonus gold. But that said, though, it is it can be a little dangerous if you're not used to the way that that guy moves. So for now, if you're a new player, you may want to just keep, you know, stick to just shooting him from a distance because he can't really attack from that far away. Also, if, you, if you're wondering why I keep looking over here to the right, it's because, uh, like I said earlier, I stream pretty much uh, every day. I take off usually like Sundays to watch football and stuff. Uh, but uh, So I keep looking over here to see the chat, and I'm like, oh yeah, there is no chat right now. And, and then I have to just go back to ranting. Usually I have you guys saying some random things or making some random sound effect noises, and I, I'm getting distracted. But today I'm actually able to stay focused. So I made a mistake here. I walked into a dead end with a fire guy. Uh, so the moment I can get out, I, I want to. And he's closing in the gap pretty close. Oh, I got lucky. That was very scary. Uh, if you want to run out... Of, oh, hold on. I can't rant. The game's not letting me rant. But if you want to run out of a situation like that, where there's fire, but you're, you don't want to lose health, you should preemptively pour water on yourself. That's the way. And also, if you see these acid guys, kill them as fast as possible. You don't kill so much about, the, uh, care so much about the gold. It's just getting rid of them because they don't. They're not that dangerous except for the fact that they bleed acid. So you can just leave them alone and walk past them. But what what makes them a little bit scary is they could be above you and you don't realize it, and something blows up and it'll just dump acid on your head. So you know, either don't kill them or kill them in a way that you know it will. There'll be no repercussions for you. Is my recommendation. Alright, we got the treasure chest. So this this is a common formation right here. It's a it's a wooden box, and inside of it, there is a uh, a heart spawn location. There's a 30% chance for a heart spawn, 40% chance for a treasure chest, and 30% chance for nothing to spawn there. So anytime you see this formation, know that you could be any of those three things could have happened. And I just told you the odds. That tends to be the general rules of, uh, of formations. 30% chance for a heart, 40% chance for a chest, 30% chance for nothing. Uh, okay. Oh my gosh. That was close. Alright, let's uh, try to get out of here. Let's stay alive. So in a... Ooh, this is interesting. In a regular run, it would probably be smart to leave at this point don't keep pushing it there's no there's not really too much of a reason besides hearts to keep pushing it further oh he stepped in water and he died uh, but with that said uh, I'm gonna keep pushing it further just to help out anybody who's watching to learn more about the first biome and just to talk more strategy and to show things like this I mean this is a decently rare spawn you don't see it that often it is a puzzle and uh, each each puzzle, whenever you see stuff like this, assume that there's a, a a reward, which is a treasure chest for solving the puzzle. Let's try to solve this one. 
Um, there's different ways that people solve this. My favorite way is to just uh, use a spark bolt, shoot it uh, decently low down on the chain so that it, it falls down. You may have, if you don't have a spark bolt, you may have to find something else to kind of dig. Uh, it, it's like bouncing bursts do not work. Only, er, only certain projectiles will allow you to break the chain. But then I need to kick this up to here. Now, there are some alternate ways you can solve this puzzle. If you find an electric stone, all you have to do is pull out the electric stone and stand here. See how there's the electric sign? Just just electrify this area and you get a prize. So this is this is the basic way that the, the puzzle gives you to solve it. But that doesn't mean you, you can't come up with your own method. So uh, paste the, the electric uh, pulses. If you paste the electric pulses, you won't get yourself electrocuted. And uh, we have a spell refresher. Not a huge deal, but not terrible either. Uh, I haven't used up a lot of my bombs and stuff, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that there for now. Also, you should probably be casting the All-Seeing Eye, you know, pretty frequently. Uh, I'm not in a rush to do it, but that doesn't mean I should be holding on to it. I'm, I'm just kind of ranting and being distracted. Uh, let's see. what. I don't know why. It seemed like it was darker than usual, but I guess it was the same as always. Anytime you see me pass over large things of toxic sludge, you'll notice that I pour uh, a bit of water into it. You don't have to do that. It's just me being, like, cautious. Because you never know if I accidentally, you know, burst into flames or something. I need to jump into the nearest water. If it's all toxic sludge, it's annoying and that's whatever. But don't don't think that just because I'm doing it, it's like you have to do that when you're playing. Uh, something like that would just be a habit. Uh, I would recommend it, but... it. You know, you'll probably notice that it doesn't even affect me in this run here. I doubt something will happen that, you know, that'll save my life. See, this is a common formation too, but uh, no, no harder chest with that formation. So, like some formations um, just have nothing with them. They're just, they're just layouts. Like I said, every layout is pre-designed. Just some of them were pre-designed to have a heart. Or a chest also with it. Hmm. Uh, also, I'd recommend just blowing up explosives when you see them. You don't have to, but the moment you don't, the moment you're like standing on one of these like this, that's when a shotgunner takes a shot and then you blow up and you're like, well, had I shot that ahead of time, I would have lived. One of the biggest mistakes I see players make with this, this toxic guy right there that, that takes those toxic shots is whenever they're dodging them from far away, so say the guy shoots at me right here, and the shot's flying at me from, from way off in the distance. Like, pretend that he, this isn't there. Obviously, this would block him. But if you sit here and you take a shot, people just levitate really high up and then keep shooting them. Instead, just le levitate a little bit. Because this shot travels so slow, it's going to hit here. Then he shoots again, levitate up a little bit more. And that, that's that's the way that you can, you know, because if, if you go down here, then you dodge way up here, then you dodge down, the toxic will pour on your head. It just, you know, just move a little bit. That guy is nothing too big to worry about. Not, not, not that dangerous. Just make sure you approach him correctly. Now, the acid guy, this is a guy that looks kind of similar to him, but he's larger. Uh, not the one that you kill and it spills out acid everywhere. Well, I guess this guy also spills out acid, but this guy shoots out acid balls. And that guy is very dangerous. You need to stay way back from him and don't even give him the opportunity to shoot acid at you because uh, it can it can nearly one-shot you. Just fr from full health to dead. Acid is super dangerous, as I'm sure many of the Noita players out there know. Acid is not something to be fucked around with. You just stay away from it. Alright, so still just clearing the first zone. Again, not necessary. Like... Our gold, more than enough. Um, it's Our wand's already decent. It's just, I'm, I'm just doing it because there, there could be formations to point out. Could be some knowledge to drop off for you guys. And since I've played so much Noita for the most part, once I make sloppy plays, I, I usually tighten up my play quite a bit. And it can be, uh, you know, I can make it where I pretty much just don't get hit. So, okay, come on. Watch this video die, uh, die in the next like minute, and I'm like, well, throwing it up on YouTube. Mistakes can happen to anyone, even somebody like me who's played a billion hours. Uh, so this is interesting because there's some frogs up there, and I want to point these guys out because these are a very unique creature in Noita. Frogs can one-shot a player from full health uh, in the first zone. Let's say you start with 100 health, right? These guys can do 100 damage in one leap. That's because the way the hitbox works on the frog, it's like a melee attack. 
So whenever he jumps, it'll hit you, right? Well, normally there's like a cooldown on how often a, these hit this hitbox can hit you on most enemies. So they don't just sit there and just rapidly hit you. But with the frog, it can rapidly hit you. Meaning you get hit, and if you fall in the same pattern that the fr the frog jumped, so you're moving you're moving together, it'll hit you over and over as you're falling. So one frog leap, if you happen to fall in that same direction, you can go you can get hit for over 100 damage. And I've seen it before. It's happened to me personally, and it's something important to po uh, to point out. Does that mean it'll happen every time? No. But I used to think that frogs could crit. I thought they could crit for like a year of playing Noita until uh, somebody in the community, I think it was Durium, he pointed out that uh, no enemies in the game can crit, not even holding on to wands. And I said, well, I've noticed that no enemies crit with shots, but those frogs crit. And so uh, we looked into it and found out that no, they do not crit. It is that their hitbox can hit you, their, you know, the, the melee box can hit you several times in a single leap. Uh, and that's what's, what's causing it. It's not a crit or anything like that. It's almost like just being unlucky that you're getting hit multiple times. Um, okay, so this zone right here, we don't have anything to see in there. But uh, if you ever have any form of light, maybe it's uh, a torch. Maybe it's just the spell light. All-seeing eye does not work. You can't swim in there and cast all-seeing eye and then all of a sudden see. Sadly, it doesn't help at all. Uh, so what you want to do is if you have something to see in there is you dig a small hole in the corner over here and uh, make sure that it is uh, Good enough that it can drain it all the way out. What the heck was that? Did that just absorb? Oh, there's go so if there's gold It'll absorb the explosion, which is what happened there some gold dust just ate it up uh, We have so many bombs and stuff. I might as well just start throwing these things around See that the, the gold ate it again right there. You gotta be very careful when doing that. I'm, I'm being sloppy here Gold will absorb the explosions. You gotta make sure you're not leaving any gold dust around whenever you're blowing stuff up so that you can get uh, as much impact as possible from those bombs. There we go. So now, basically, I've created a zone that the water can flow down to. And from here, if you idled around for a couple minutes, all the water will take uh, will go from the first zone. It'll flow down here, almost all of it. And then you can get to the... Uh, there is a heal, and there is a 25 HP heart in there. Um, every run, always, on every seed. Uh, because as, as you saw, I just chose a random seed. This I just hit new game. I have never played on this seed before. I don't know anything about it. Um, let's check that wand. So we're in an interesting spot because I would like to check that wand. We have a spell refresher, but I'm lazy. Let's try this. Alright, so we got close. Okay, is that... Hmm. Not my greatest throw. There we go, another bomb. Eh, I, I don't really see. Like, this wand right here that had the bomb on it is already like a good wand, same as this wand. Um, in terms of the spells, they offer the same thing. But this wand itself has better stats than this wand. So, uh, unless I needed another bomb to, to use in this level, I, I wouldn't see myself ever picking that up. But if I was like over here and I need an extra bomb, then maybe I grab that wand just to use the bombs and then head back over here. Uh, also, the uh, the weird fungus pouch. If you're curious why I keep ho uh, hovering my cursor over that, it's because by habit you should check every pouch. Uh, there can be gold pouches that will give you one thousand gold if you find them. All you gotta do is you know pour them out once you pick them up, and you get a thousand gold. So, uh, the whole first zone, kind of a bust, man. Tw 25 uh, HP from the orb, and then no hearts from the level. Uh, there is some zones that I moved a little quickly through, but for the most part, I think I explored, you know, 80% of this zone. So, a little disappointing, but we'll move on. Grab up the heal, and uh, wow, what a what a great holy mountain. Um, it, it, anytime you see a mountain like this, that has like multiple good resources, make sure you prioritize things correctly. I've seen so many players grab stuff like, okay, I need damage. So they'll grab the, the chain bolt, right? They'll be like, okay, I got I got my damage here. And by the, oh, by the way, I grabbed this earlier out of a, um, a chest and I'd even point out that I really have no plans to use it. Somebody may have been like, ooh, I wanna see how he used it. No, I got nothing. Um, so they'll, they'll grab their damage and then they'll be like, oh, I wanna grab the chainsaw because chainsaw is amazing. And it is, that is probably the best thing in here that I needed to grab. Then they'll, they'll start just grabbing all the stuff, and they don't leave themselves enough gold to grab the teleport. But if you grab the teleport first, then you can always exit the Holy Mountain whenever you need. 
and then go collect gold, come back in here, teleport back into the Holy Mountain, and, and purchase them up, do the editing. But in the reverse order, if you can't afford the teleport, then you may have not left yourself away, you know what I mean? So it's not being very efficient, and you end up locking yourself into a very uh, specific build. For this level, at least. Obviously, next level, you could change it up again. So uh, we're going to go with uh, what we got here. Nothing too wild. I would like the would like the Luminous Drill. I'm not a big fan of these perks. These are very disappointing. Uh, Revenge Explosion is cool, and I, I've seen a lot of people grab it. The reason I'm not all about Revenge Explosion is because, yes, Explosion's uh, resistance is nice, but uh, when you get to uh, certain levels, like the Heesey base, where there's explosives everywhere, and if you, there's many moments that you'll find yourself scrambling, and you'll scramble right over a group of canisters, two or three of them, and if something shot you in that moment, even with your resistance, you're most likely dead. Because you gotta keep in mind, I say this all the time to people on stream so that they don't get discouraged whenever they get to the Heesey base and they die. The the propane tanks, which we'll, we'll point them out when I get there, those hit harder than nukes. Yes, propane tanks, a propane tank in the Heesey base will hit harder than a nuke to the face, which makes very little sense, but hey, that's Noita, baby. Um, also, I'm gonna grab a spark bolt. Uh, it may seem silly, but it's so cheap and you know, it, 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 spark bolts are, are awesome. Spark bolts, spark bolts offer a lot of utility that uh, we could use later. So we're going to roll these. Um, I'm not, not a fan of any of them. Spontaneous generation, revenge, uh, explosions, telekinetic kick. Yeah. Some players, uh, they can really get some huge value out of telekinetic kick. That's all a play style thing. Some people can really do work with that. But the other two, I'd say, do not grab that. Um, so we're going to do a roll here. And um, we get the uh, projectile duplication. Never been impressed with it, like ever. Uh, contact damage, which is kind of cool. Problem with contact damage is if you ever find yourself thrown into a situation, maybe a swapper swaps you in, just something happens and you don't have the area completely under control, if you back into an enemy that bleeds lava or bleeds acid or whatever, like this can make things worse. You could actually run to an enemy that then bleeds out tons of acid and then it insta kills you. You know, it's like, oh, well, that that's <laughs> my my own part gets me killed. So the plus one uh, is the easiest decision. Oh, one more fun thing to, to point out about the contact damage is uh, the polymorph enemies that you'll see in the later levels actually used to bleed polymorph at one point, And the contact damage was a nightmare. So if you ever run to like an experienced player and they have a little bit of uh, PTSD towards that, it, it's probably because of uh, the contact damage days with polymorph because people would walk into a polymorph mage and they would just shoot out polymorph stuff everywhere. Well, obviously if you're walking into them, making contact to it, and they're bleeding polymorph you're definitely we're going to get hit with polymorph so i i've seen many people die to that uh, way back in the day back in the earlier noita days um so this is kind of interesting let's see if we can put off grabbing that refresher i doubt we will be able to but let's try so let's use this all seeing eye so here is a formation. This is a very common one for this level. It's wood formation that has three steps. So one here, one here, one here. At the bottom of this, there can be a heart, there can be a chest, or there could be nothing. So step here, step here, and a chest. Which is, the, like I said earlier, the, the most likely uh, thing to see. So it's not a 40% it's a chance. So. Ooh, another formation. That one dropped nothing. Lame. Uh, let me get rid of this guy first. Uh, if you're curious why I haven't just opened this chest up right away, it's because this could drop an electric stone in it, and the electric stone would kill me. So your options are to shoot it from far away, or to kick it out of the water, which is kind of a pain to do sometimes, as you can see that I'm trying to do here because the water resists you, and uh, kick it out of the water and then open it. So this, this chain bolt does not open it very well. Let's try to hit the explosive and see if that'll open it. It'll let us... There we go. So it did explode, it dropped water, pick up the water, nothing too exciting there. Uh, there's another, there's, there's formations everywhere. It's because we we use the, uh, the all-seeing eye spell, we're able to see all these formations very clearly. This one right there is known as the wood formation, and uh, I'll explain that in a second, and how it works. This is just a, a simple water pool uh, formation, spawns a heart or a chest or nothing right there. That was uh, one we got nothing. So this one... 
which by the way, the spell that we're using to fight is called Chain Bolt, and it has a natural built-in homing. It's not the greatest late game spell. I mean, any spell could be made, you know, to look really powerful. But in general, it's not your greatest late game spell. But early game, it's pretty badass. And you just shoot in the general direction, and it takes takes care of business for you, you know? Play Anoita for you. I'd recommend it uh, very, you know, very highly for newcomer, newcomer players. Uh, so this can be a pain to line up the shots on this, because it does not home on the nest. So you have to line up the shots just right. So, as I'm shooting this nest, it's bleeding lava up here, which then dropped a spell refresher in that chest. Give me a moment, I'll head over there. But I don't want to make too many mistakes, because this zone is actually made up of two zones. Same as the first area, the first area is made up of two zones as well. The reason I knew to dodge that is because I heard the, the shotgun, the ch, ch and I could see this guy and I could see this guy, so we knew it was coming in from up there. There's so much going on in Noita, it's hard to keep my, my train of thought going, like I'm just jumping all over the place. Screw it. Whatever I was talking about, don't worry about it. Um, okay, the wood formation. This one, you can't, usually you just see this edge. Be because I have all, uh, because I cast All Seeing Eye, you can see it very clearly. But uh, it's referred to as the wood formation, and right here, there's a chance for a heart, or a chest, or nothing to spawn. And then over here, there's a chance for a wand to spawn. It's a, it's a very awesome formation. And uh, the wand, obviously, if you can't see in there, like it'll glow, so you don't need to check in there if there's no glowing. This, though, you need to check, because there's coal, and if there's a heart, the heart can be hidden behind the coal. And uh, so they very important to always check there. Uh, in this case, we are going to hopefully get into that spell refresher. So what I did is I put the bomb as my second cast, so anytime I want to use the bomb, I have to cast I have to cast the All Seeing Eye first, and then I can cast the bomb. I mean, it's up to you. However, you want to do that. I'm just trying to be efficient here and get use of All Seeing the All Seeing Eye spell, and also still get to use my bombs. Because worst case scenario, if I want to use a bomb, I just have to waste one All Seeing Eye, even if I don't want to use it. You know, not a big deal. Small efficiencies. Hmm. Nothing too exciting about this formation. Oh wow, what a bad dodge. The audio is a little bit weird there too. That's common in Noita. You'll notice that the uh, the audio kind of spazzes out a lot. It's a little crunchy. Alright, a whole lot of nothing going on here. So luckily, I left my Holy, uh, Holy Mountain intact, uh, so that one, once I find something that's better, or hopefully I find something that's better, I will be able to... Uh, all seeing I didn't make any noise. I'll be able to return back to the mountain and do some editing. Gotta say though, this seed has been super disappointing. That's not a bad wand. Uh, capacity is terrible. But the rest of the stats are pretty solid. Enough that I would like to move my chain bolt uh, over to it if I can. So what we are going to do is temporarily, we're going to lay this down. So that we can uh, make some edits and then we will come back. If I can find my way that is. Huh. We need to blow into that because I'm lazy and I don't want to walk all the way around. You'll get used to the TNT throws and all that. I mess them up all the time, so don't think that you gotta, I'll, I'll hit every throw first time, you know? Very unlikely. Alright, so we're back in here because we are avoiding the, the collapse of the Holy Mountain, which I made a video on that, so I'm sure a lot of you guys already understand. We'll keep the egg, not that I have any big plans for it, and we're going to move the chain bolt down to this wand. This is now our um, our main wand. It's uh, got better mana. We can spam more without us, uh, any fear of running out of mana. Not that the other one, that, that was much of an issue. but uh, However, of these three wands, the one that's the worst is the starter wand. So what we're going to do is going to rotate over the um, the teleport bolt. And, the, and then this is going to be the wand that we pretty much throw away. Not much use for it. Now you could swap on the Luminous Drill onto one of these wands so that you have uh, better digging. 
Oh yeah, I didn't even go for the wand. I talked about it and then I just didn't check it. Smart. Uh, I guess the reason I didn't check it is uh, I am used to some of the, the looks of the wands. And I feel like that wand right there does not have the greatest stats. It tends to be one that has shitty stats and nothing to get too excited about. However, it could have good spells on it. So we should check it for that to reason alone. And as you can see, pretty much as I predicted. It doesn't mean it's 100%. Sometimes you'll find it and you'll be like, whoa, but, you know, most of the time. Most of the time you have a general idea about how it looks. And that's just because I play a ton. Don't think there's anything to memorize there. Ooh, did you see that? There was something that was explosive. That is dangerous. It was like electricity, I think. Uh, oh, there it is. Do not let that guy near that wand. Yeah, there you go. And this is a good wand. This is this is very interesting. So the wand itself, not bad at all. Uh, got a little work to do on it to make it good, but we can we can work on that. Pick up the lightning. And I left that one wand earlier with the all-seeing eye on the ground, but I'm starting to question if I'm even going to go back for it. Let me through. Oh. So hopefully your OCD isn't going crazy whenever I skip uh, lots of nuggets of gold. That's because, like I said, gold is not the most important thing. And uh, you can pick them up. There's no reason not to other than it just takes time. And the more you play, you really start to see how little gold matters. I mean, imagine I collected, you know, 200 gold in the first level. And then I just left. Like I, like I potentially could have because my health was very low. And it would have made sense. Uh, what would have happened is I would have got to this level. I would have seen that there was teleport and other good stuff. I would have bought the telly first, then teleported out, farmed up gold out here, then went up and bought whatever I needed. But for the most part, you can you can almost always find a way to to make things work out, even when you're, you know, short on gold. That's why it's not like my most you know top priority thing to to do. When you have an electric wand, be careful when you're jumping in water because you only have like a second before it electri electrifies the water, and if you don't have electric immunity, which I do not, then you dead. Also, fun fact about the perk that I do have, the extra life, is you can stack those. So you could have the extra life perk three times, that means you would have to die three times. In this case, I only have one of them so far, so if I die once, I respawn one time. And once it, uh, once you have used it up, it does not return. Like you can find more of the perk, but that one that you used up is is gone forever. Ooh, look at this! So this guy will give us something to rant about, but he is very dangerous. So the ghost, which we're looking at here, is one of the main reasons that you should carry a tablet around, uh, even whenever. Uh, you really don't like to use it. I don't like to use the tablet very much. Not a fan of the mechanic, but it is crazy strong, and there is no, no denying that. It feels like the, the ghost is stuck down there. So a lot of people, uh, this may be your, your first time seeing one of these ghosts if you're a newer player, and that's because the ghost does not begin to spawn in your game until there have at least been like, I think it's around 30-ish wands or so in your bones folder. Now, some people may be like, what the hell does that even mean? Um, so currently I have my replay turned on, right? Um, right here you'll see replay recorder is turned on. What that does is anytime during a run, I can just press F11 and it's going to pull up this replay right here. And at the top, it'll say open GIF directory. Now when I open that up, it's going to take us directly where, um, like, you know, into the, the Noita folder and everything. So we can scroll on over to, I, I think it's here and in save zero zero. Persistent. See this is called Bones New? This folder right here, every time you die, if you have no mods turned on, there is a chance that, uh, I think it may actually may be guaranteed, that some of your wands will go into this folder. It's recorded down. It's like a graveyard for wands of your past runs where you died and you had no mods on. If you have a mod on, it does not record them. Uh, once this graveyard reaches a certain point, ghosts begin to spawn in your world and they carry wands from your past runs. Yes, so that guy is carrying a wand that could have, that could be a wand that took me 20 hours and like a, a crazy long run to build. It's possible, or it could be a basic wand that I died with uh, when I found it and two seconds later I died. I do not know. 
So uh, this th these things are spicy. It can be scary. Uh, but it's one of the things that only starts to show up once you've played a, a decent amount of the game. So this this one seems like it's packing some pretty good damage. So we're going to try to play this very cautiously. See if I can just stay above him for a bit. I don't even know if the TNT is hitting him. But if he hits me, I, I think it's packing some real damage. Oh, whatever it is, he's, he's moving now. See if I can get lucky here on this throw. Yeah, I did. Got him. That's the reason I carry the tablet. And look at that. Look at that monster. So this is not helpful for you guys whatsoever. Because I'm sure, you know, me being like, all right, here's how you do it, guys. You find a ghost, and then it has a wand that is like crazy good stats, and then you just murder everything in the game. It's like, all right, well, you didn't learn shit from that, right? Uh, but I will show you real quickly, just so you're not, you're not thinking I'm bullshit. Like, okay, that wand isn't that good. Let me show you. Um, I mean, obviously, the spells on it and everything are juicy. But before I toss it away... It's funny because I, I have a, a decent memory of using this wand. It seems very familiar because of the Venomous Curse and stuff. It's not something I usually run. And I, I feel like I, I removed some chainsaws off of it because I ended up moving it to another wand before I ended up dying or something. Oh well, oh well. Uh, but anyways, it's beside the point. Um, real quickly, let me drop this in the water. That, that is a good spell, but we have no use for it right now. And like I said, I'm going to be throwing all of this away. Uh, five casts, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, which is, is a uh, two cast, one, two. It's a three cast, one, two, three. The three cast as well, one, two, three. Uh, actually, let's do. So there we go. So the wand is. Oh, it's a two cast there. Um, drop that on the ground. You know what? I deserve at least a double. No, we'll throw the whole thing away. I feel it's kind of cheap. Kind of cheap to use. So let me throw these in the water. Um. See five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. So I need an extra spell. Actually, I need to I need to grab both of these. I just realized. Because this is a double trigger, so it's gonna fire off um It's gonna fire off an extra spell. Because the first the first trigger fires off all of these. We chain those perfectly. The second trigger was gonna fire off this at the same in the same moment. And then let's fire it to make sure it's going correctly. Yes. And then um, er, I had made a video um, on my uh, YouTube channel that you guys can watch of how to use, utilize this chainsaw. I'm about to use it right here. So let's fire at this. There you go. Easily like a thousand damage. Uh, no problem. 745. Uh, but watch this. Let's go ahead and let's remove this spitter bolt. Now let's fire it. That's how much counting out this package, this payload, perfectly matters. It can go from being like this to being like this. That's, I'm holding it down. That's as fast as it can go because of how I, uh, I the payload is not uh, counted out correctly. Because this is five spells. One, two, three, four, five. And this is two. So one, two. This is three. So one, two, three. This is three, so one, two, three. And then that that would be perfect for a single trigger, but this is a double trigger, meaning I need an extra bonus spell at the end. Otherwise, what'll happen is this chainsaw, instead of wrapping to this double, instead this chainsaw gets placed inside of the double trigger, and it's not there to give that machine gun wand effect. If you don't know how the chainsaw works, I do have a video on it. Feel free to, to look up on, uh, on the channel. It's called like how to, it's, I don't know, something about chainsaws are in the title. So it shouldn't be hard hard to find out. But if you're curious how you figure out mechanics like this on your own, just look at this board that's here. When it, when I fire it, you'll see that the chainsaw is in the payload there. It is firing it off. Um, even though it would look very similar if you place it out correctly. You can also see that it's splitting it up. I don't want to go too much into that. That may be a little bit uh, too advanced for for this, uh, you know, first longer run that I'm posting up on YouTube. I don't want to go on any rants that I feel like you guys are just like, all right, that was pretty boring to sit through. You know what I mean? Um, but anyway, so this this is the whole wand. I did I, I, the chainsaw was mine. This is my chainsaw. Uh, however, this is what the the ghost gave us in that venomous curse. So we're gonna toss it. We're gonna leave it on the ground. It is god tier. It would make this run very easy. 
but it would kind of take away the excitement, you know? It wouldn't, it would just be like, hey, the way to winning Noita is find an awesome ghost wand. And uh, I want to show people that that's not, that's not how it works. I mean, yes, that is very lucky to find that, but it's not necessary to get a Noita to win. In fact, like, I can, I'm pretty confident we will get a win here. It's just about making the correct decisions with uh, what's given to us. I would have really liked one of those doubles, though, to use with this chainsaw. We were not given it, however. I mean, we were we were given it, but I mean, it, we weren't given it on a separate wand. It was given on that wand that we have to throw away. Um, all right, so this 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 thing is kind of interesting. This spawns on the surface. It's for the sun quest, or it's for it's for the forgotten boss. It's how it's a crucial part to killing them, a, a crucial key. Uh, if you ever destroy it on accident, the one that the game gives you, the only other way to get it uh, is not in Parallel Worlds. It doesn't spawn there. You have to get it from a chest, which is what you just saw right there. And uh, you, what, if you ever do long runs and you start to do, you know, several of them, you'll you'll have it go wrong. You'll have it happen where you accidentally destroy that eye. It happens to everyone. And whenever that does occur, that's when you will never get one uh, dropped out of your chest during that run. <laughs> Anytime you don't care about it, it shows up. Anytime you do care about it and you need one, you're not gonna see it. It's how the Noita gods work. They're evil. That's how it's been for me. It just never works out. It's like, damn it! I destroyed the eye, and now I know. I'm no I, you know, you open like a hundred of those chests, and you just can't find one. Frustrating. Uh, so we can use our lightning to dig through the coal a bit here, and to ignite the wood. Be very careful though when you do this, because you could hurt yourself. Lightning is super explosive. There's a double. Okay. Alright, I was just crying about how I didn't have one, and now things are looking up. So we can leave behind this TNT, um, because the TNT there, it was there mainly to dig, but now the, the pollen will fill in that role. So, let's go. Oops, I am not going anywhere. Get out of here. <laughs> Feels so weird not uh, having a chat, you know, spamming noises or talking crap. Like, oh, I see how it is. You have to use a ghost wand. And I'm like, no, chat, I'll throw it away. I promise. Uh, okay, so this double, we're going to partner with, with a chainsaw later. Go ham. Uh, actually, we could use it right now. Uh, I'll show you. So this is our lightning wand right now, yeah? What we could do to speed things up, because this is as fast as it fires. That's me holding it down. Like, I'm holding down the shot right now. If we put our, uh, oops, our chainsaw double in the front, it's not going to be crazy fast, but, you know, it, it puts some, some pep in the shot. Now, the main reason I'm not going to do that is because right now it's, you know, if we're using the lightning to kill something, it should insta die to it. We don't need any kind of rapid fire. Plus, I would like the option... You know what? Actually, you know what we could do? We do this. Ah, though, I do want the option to drop the wand if we need to. Ah, well, this is this is fine. We'll go like this. Just gotta remember the lightning wand's down here. That's our disposable wand. We may throw it away if we find something good. And now we can fire these much faster. Optimizing. Woo! Pollen is going to be our digging wand. Pollen is like very, very low tier dig, but it does dig. Like, better than no digging. No digging is miserable. Uh, if you want to dig with pollen, don't dig from far back. I didn't use it for the longest time because I would try to dig like this, and then I'd walk and I'd get hit by those, and they do some damage to you. They hurt. Then uh, I slowly found out if you dig close to it like this, you can not hurt yourself, and at the same time... Get through whatever material you're looking to get through. Except for like steel, you know, or brickwork. But, you know, the diggable stuff. Alright, so we're heading over to the fungal zone. Because we are getting screwed by RNG. And we really need some hearts. And that's the only place left to explore, I think. Oh, we got some room down here. Okay. Some spark bolts. I'm not super interested. The triple is kind of interesting. Think about it. Whoop. Nothing there. Hmm.
The thing we'd be most excited for if we came across right now would probably be an add mana. An add mana would open up some huge potential for us. Who is this doing here? Get rid of him. So, you may notice uh, this formation from whenever I, I first showed you when I entered into this level. I said the three steps, right? The three wood planks. One, two, three. However, you'll notice that the world generation spawned it where the holy mountain is right here. So it actually ate up the zone where we could have gotten the heart. Which is, you know, that sucks. <laughs> Unlucky. Sorry if you hear me making any weird noises. I got some, uh, my allergies going a little crazy right now. Sometimes I'm sniffing and stuff. Ugh, don't die from my allergies, please. Nothing too exciting there. There's a couple formations that I, I kind of skip pointing out. I feel like I point out the ones that are the, the easiest to learn. So don't go thinking, oh, what is going on there? Don't go thinking just because I don't point out something that it's not a formation. Everything is a formation. Everything. So this this looks interesting interesting to me. I'm not quite sure what it is. I, I, I think it's electricity and water or something, but I don't know why it wouldn't be killing. We'll see in a moment. Concentrated mana. Pretty useful to us. So we currently don't have any way to dig through steel, so uh, we're going to get rid of our Berserkium. I was holding on to it just for, you know, maybe maybe we need it for some kind of like, uh, we find Flum, and you pour Flum and Berserkium together, you make Pheromone, you never know. But uh, I'm not going to use it now. Ooh, this, kill the Telemages. If you notice that anytime I see that Telemage, I just go for him immediately. Because he is very dangerous. Oh, it's an Electric Stone just sitting in water. Oh, I looked a little different than what I... All right, well, whatever. Another electric stone. Do, 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 do. If you're curious why this wand is doing so well with this chain bolt, because the mana region on it. A mana region is what sets some of these wands apart from others. Oh, look at that guy, he's invis, so he looks so weird. You just see the cape, that was it. Um, yeah, but look at look at the mono region on this 525 mono region. Mono region is like one of the top priority uh, things to look at. I mean, obviously it's the most important that it's shuffle or non-shuffle, but from there, I'm I'm looking at that mono region. Mono region will allow you to, you know, spam something like I am. This is even better digging than our this digging. So hell yeah, just getting upgrades all over the place. We got going on here invisibilium i think so uh, that is one of the flasks that i'm afraid that new guys because i pass it think oh that, that flask is garbage this flask is actually uh, kind of insane you can just invis through whole entire levels and like you just the temple you're having a hard time with the temple all right put it you know carry an invis flask with you uh, hold on, let me place this down carry an invis flask with you and uh, you just invis yourself like so, and you just walk through the whole final zones. Uh, there are a couple things that they've done to make that uh, much, you know, not much more, but a little riskier. And that's that uh, there are a couple things that can still see you in like the final zone, such as the, the traps that shoot arrows and lightnings and acids and stuff. They can still see you, so they make it a little more difficult. But you can just walk through areas throwing invis on yourself. It does not break the invis when you pour. What people will do is they run around, and any time that the invis gets low, I mean, like, look, we're just walking right past a frog, don't care, past some flum, and they're like, oh, uh, maybe maybe you're starting to feel uncomfortable. You're like, that's too low. All right, spray a little bit more on yourself. You're back to... It is very, very strong. But at that point, are you even playing Noita? You're just walking through Noita. You're playing Metal Gear Solid. At that point, like, I mean, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what else to say. Metal Gear Solid, uh, just, just hiding from everybody, sneaking around. I mean, maybe you enjoy that style of play, but I think uh, one of the, one of Noita's strengths is the 
the action with all the wand building and stuff, and I don't want to pass the good part, right? But to get my first win, I use that method because, hey, that first win, you do whatever you got to do to get that W, to get that first victory because it gets easier from there. You start getting used to winning. It's not as scary. Uh, this is kind of an exciting wand. So exciting that I'm going to throw away my lightning wand because if we find an add mana, this wand will pop off. Because the recharge is very low, so this chainsaw with uh, the wrap will be enough to remove all of Castellay, all of recharge. Problem is our mana, so we have to find an add mana to make that usable. But it could happen. Uh, ooh, Telly Mage, he's dead. Like I said, top priority: kill Telly Mage if you see him. Don't risk him being alive. So many people lose their runs to Telly Mages. Learn from others' mistakes. Not that I would ever make that mistake, you know. God gamer here. I looked over the chat so that they're saying copium, but uh, there's no chat there. <laughs> okay, that was a big misplay. Uh, I'll show that again in replay. I got, I got restless, sprinted around the corner, not really paying too much attention. This guy right here is faded out. Um, a lot of the enemy, I think we, do we have a biome modifier with their invis or is there just a good dude invising them all? Oh, there was the invis guy right there. He invises uh, his teammates. That's the reason I didn't take notice to him very quickly. No big deal though. Just you play sloppy, Noito will backhand you. Then you go back to you know playing cautiously. The circle of Noito. Oh, that's a that's a pretty awesome find right there. Uh, okay, here's the plan. We set this down and get this off of me. In fact, I've been considering making a video. On this uh, this guy right here, one of uh, one of the greatest dudes to run into, and uh, what you can do is you can actually farm a Tele flask off of him, which is super helpful. This Tele flask is a regular teleportadium flask, and it's 200% filled. Hopefully, I can get my hands. Oh, what did he just throw? He just killed himself. Damn. Well. It's usually pretty easy to, to get it from him. I don't know what exactly happened there. Why it cracked so fast. Maybe my, my teleport bolt broke it or something. Hmm. Yeah, that was a misplay. Honestly, it was a little bit unlucky that he threw Pheromone first. Because once he throws Pheromone, then you have to kick him every time you want him to throw a flask. Or I could have sacrificed my water flask to wash off the Pheromone. That would probably been the smartest move. Because then we have another water flask right there. Uh, but yeah, that, that was a misplay. Uh, that, that guy would have offered us a lot of resources. We could have got a Tele Flask and gone nuts. But we're going to take this Broken Wand instead, which is also pretty badass. There's a Swapper there. You'll notice that the Chain Bolts don't swap him. They will every once in a while swap with the Swapper, but it's usually like the Killing Blow. But nonetheless, it's important to know that the Chain Bolt doesn't always swap on Swapper. Pretty damn nice. I don't know why it's that way. They're just some spells that that's how they work. I thought I saw some lightning over here. Huh. Maybe I'm losing it. I'm going crazy. Oh, okay, don't smack your face into that wall. Surprised it didn't hurt me worse than that. I don't think it hurt me like at all. I got lucky. Eh, nothing too exciting. Meh. Oh, okay, don't... I keep shooting the wrong wand if you're curious. I'm not trying to tell you. Just being sloppy. That's a, another Ambrosia Flask there. Makes you invincible whenever you have it, or whenever you spray it on yourself. However, one of those is enough. Was that mage carrying a wand? Let me see, because if he is, I need to get the heck out of here. Because if he's carrying a lightning wand, it could be an insta-death. Uh, no, I didn't see a wand on him. Not yet. Ooh, damage plus, and a triple sp I mean, a, a triple spell. I guess we'll let go of this wand. I was hoping we find an add mana. I guess, worst case, we find an add mana, we come back, right? 
can always return. There's there's a dangerous guy right there. We gotta get rid of this guy. Very dangerous. Uh, nothing too exciting. Sorry if I don't slow down on the wands more. That's what, uh, you know, that kind of stuff, I don't know. Like, I need feedback from you guys. Yeah, because I don't even know if this is entertaining, if it's something that you're interested in. But if there are any critiques, maybe things that you would prefer to happen in this video, post in the comments. Like, uh, I, I will, I read them all. I don't respond to every single one of them, especially whenever some of them give me an idea of a video to make. And I'm like, oh, I'll make a video on that. And then, uh, and then I can post it up, and then they'll they'll answer it. You know, they'll they'll understand it. For example, people posted before, how does a chainsaw work? Well, you know, it takes a bit to explain that. So I was just like, screw it, I'll make a I'll make a video on that. And then like uh, a week and a half later, I did. Uh, but if you post a comment saying like, hey, I wish you would slow down when looking at wands, or hey, I wish you would go faster when doing this or that, uh, it would help me understand, you know, what what you guys are watching for, what what kind of style of play I should do whenever recording one of these uh, for YouTube because most of these that I do or all of these that I do are for uh, Twitch so I, I play in a way that's you know rant friendly so I can just chat chat it up with a live chat but since there's no one here chatting I'm like do I sp do I go faster now do I speed it up um, there are a couple things left in this area but for the most part we've we drain the resources we have not found a single heart this is uh, this is very unlucky it's not uncommon for me to leave this zone with, uh, you know, at this point, maybe finding three to five hearts. I would say, I would say two is, con one to two is considered it's been a pretty rough run, and we have found zero. Very unlucky, but, you know, hey, it's important to show runs whenever I'm not just, you know, super OP all the time. Uh, nothing exciting there. Melee immunity, melee immunity is exciting. One of the best perks in the game. We're going to put up the, actually we're going to put the damage plus onto our chain bolt here. Put up the triple spell. Toss these. I mean the wand is not terrible. It's just, I don't really have any big plans for, for this wand. So, toss it on the ground. Now, this is a move that is considered pretty greedy. And if I die, whenever you're watching this, you will laugh and you will be shaking your head like, you, you greedy, greedy noob. But I'm going to leave this heart here for a second. And I'm going to go look out in the level for some, some extra HP. Because you got to remember, when you find H HP in the world, it gives you 25 HP. But it's empty. So, like, let's say I find four hearts out in the level. That's 100 HP that is not healed up. So if I can find maybe one or two of those and then grab the heal and then go out exploring again, it's much safer. Uh, however, since my health is not full right now, it, I am vulnerable for a little bit. You don't have to make this play. I just like to do it. I feel like... It pays off a lot of the time. We'll see if uh, if I if I change my my opinion on that after this run. What is happening with that guy? He's just shooting rocks. Remember to always check these wands. Okay, this formation right here has a chance for a heart being hidden in the uh, the snow here. What I tell you? What I tell you? All right, we snag that. Our health goes up 25, and again, it's empty. So now, when I grab that heal, it'll be filled in health. So we get to, you know, a little bit of extra safety when when doing some exploring here. Something big just exploded. I have my settings set very low, so that I don't have to deal with a lot of screen shake and stuff. So for me to see screen shake means that something massive exploded, and here it is. This formation is a decently common one. And what it is, is it's filled with canisters and explosives. So once you, you detonate one of them, they all go nuts. So, yeah. And by a lot, I mean like, we're talking like 10 to 15 canisters. It's, there's a lot whenever it's, this formation spawns. It's like an insta-death if you, if you dig into it and you don't have any explosion immunity. Kinda evil. Be very careful when pushing canisters around like what I just did. That was a bad move. Because again, my health is below the threshold that could give me insta-killed. 
That was that was pretty dumb of me. What I should have done is I should have shot the orb at it. We shoot the orb whenever it makes contact, it'll instantly detonate it. This one does not instantly detonate it unless it hits it perfectly. Uh, this one just makes it fly all over the place. But yeah, right there. If I died, it's important that you recognize stuff like that because I see so many times players, you know, because people talk about you know you got noited, which yeah, that does happen. Getting noited is kind of like you know oh so unlucky, but. Really, were you unlucky is what you need to ask yourself sometimes because I've seen people, you know, use use a, something like this, shoot the canister, flies back, blows up, and they're just like, oh man, noited. And it's like, well, actually, that was your own fault because you could have used the thing uh, like an orb, shot it, instantly detonated the canister, uh, or just not detonate the canister at all, either way. And, um, you know, that's, that's on you at that point, right? It's a, that, that's how you become a better Noita player and you win consistently is when you start to accept that while yes stuff does fill RNG there most likely was something that you could have done to prevent it uh, let's see so right now if we were to die uh, because of maybe maybe an enemy off screen shoots a nuke because a nuke will do like 90 damage the, the misplay was me being greedy and not grabbing that heart however I am feeling greedy right now I, I'm feeling lucky so if I grab uh, my heart, then my health will be above the, the nuke threshold. I enjoy playing greedy. Makes me, uh, you know, it, make, it, it makes it a little more at stake, I guess. I could heal up, and then, I, then usually when I heal up, I play sloppy, because I'm like, ah, my health is so high. But instead... I just force myself to play well from the get-go. Magic Missile, not that interested. It's a very small wand. At this point, uh, two capacity wands don't interest me at all. Okay. That is a puzzle. How we're going to solve it, I don't know yet. So there's a couple ways that we can get into this. I will show you both of them. Actually, normally there's electricity. And we still have two ways to get in there. If there's electricity, a box right here, you pour water in between this. Electricity ignites the oil. Oil burns this. Blah, 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 blah. Puzzle solved. Another option is getting below it and using any kind of teleport wand. You just uh, shoot directly up. And it doesn't teleport you every time like that, but a lot of time it does teleport you. So this is a nice wand. A very nice wand. What I would like to do is drop our digging wand temporarily and exit for a second. It'll let me. Not a good dodge. Huh. Trying to see where exactly we are. I lost my... Oh, hello. Okay, I, see that shot right there, I tried to go from memory where I thought this zone was. But if I misremembered and I shot in an area that we, had un we hadn't explored, then there could have been an Uko waiting right there for us. Could have gotten got. That, that person's referred to as a CEO, that he see. Uh, it, whenever you hit them, they spawn enemies. You gotta be a little, you gotta be a little afraid of them. Don't fight them below them, like I was doing there. That's silly. Always fight them from uh, above. They're less likely to be able to kill you. If you're below them, they drop enemies on you. It's a whole thing. So we go up here. We grab this heal. Uh, prickly spores. I doubt we're gonna use them, but I'll hold on to one. Put up the quad. I doubt we're gonna use that. I'll put up one rock just in case. And now this is our new TP wand, and the reason for that is it, it's an upgrade over this wand right here. So might as well move our TP in case we want to make it uh, something else later. Always try to have the best four wands that you've come across as your inventory wands, right? There's no reason to leave the good shit behind. Okay, that was a that was a hell of a shot right there. I didn't even notice how much he had arced it off the screen. He shot it before I, I was paying attention to him. See, that's a mistake to shoot at that again. Uh, hold up. But I'll show you 
Oh no, I don't have the, I don't have the orb. Well, I detonated it anyways. I was gonna show you how you could shoot an orb at it, and it will instantly blow up. All right, we came through here, right? Pretty sure we did. We did. And now we have our digging back, and we are in good shape. Oh yeah, I, did, I showed one method, I didn't show the other. The other option was we had concentrated mana. Could have poured it like that, melted the steel. That's what concentrated mana does. And then just dig our way in. That was another option. It's important to know the different options because you won't always have, you know, tons of resources on you. So whenever you, you know these, you know, 10 different ways to get into that box, you're bound to be able to use one of them whenever you're in these, these runs that things are just not going your way. Right, let's find some water. So this puzzle right here, if you notice, there's like a water line. We want to push the water up to this point. Uh, okay, I think I heard, heard some electricity over to my right. It means there's a good chance there's an Uko over there. All right, let's empty out this water. Come on. So this one's kind of cool. This wand here will always have a uh, piercing as, as an always cast. It'll always have an always cast piercing. Boop. There you go. Uh, maybe, maybe there's a small percent that it doesn't. Maybe there's, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Maybe in the code you look and there's like a 1% a chance it doesn't or something. But uh, in my experience, uh, you pretty much always get uh, piercing shot as uh, they always cast on this thing. Uh, with that said, this wand is pretty hot garbage. Luminous timer is kind of interesting, but not that interesting. I would grab the luminous timer if I didn't already have a chainsaw and I have a luminous drill put up here. But we will we will grab the wand just to hold on to it because you never know. It, it will, we'll, there's a good chance we'll be dropping it in a bit. Now let's see about that electricity that I heard. Ooh, look at that. Those shots. So if you noticed, I saw a piece of gold fly up down here. I mean, I, it could be overthinking it, but usually whenever you see just stuff flying around below you, that's a sign of an Uko. Because Uko is just throwing these shots that are just insanely explosive. And so it, it just tosses stuff around. So we got to be very cautious. This is also a very common Uko formation right here in the snowy depths. Oh, nope. Huh, I'm still on high alert. I don't trust that. I don't trust that at all. Could have caused that gold to fly up there like that. Huh. We may never know. It's a mystery. I'm just trying to shoot behind that wall. I didn't know what was behind it, so I figured let's get rid of it. Alright, same idea. Uh, this time we'll just dig in from above. Two doubles and a speed up. We have a triple already. Nah, we don't need that that badly. I mean, I would like it, but not that badly. I'm just searching around for health right now. So you know what I'm going to do? This is a kind of a greedy play. We're going to drop our concentrated mana and we're going to grab a second broken wand. These wands will pay off in the next level, so I figured let's it's it's a slightly random, but let's let's see if we can get the good payoff. Uh, this is what's referred to as the smooching gorilla formation, uh, named by Shiba, the streamer. I, I believe he was the one that named it. Solar, let me know about it. Uh, it looks like the profile of a gorilla is what I was uh, is what I was told, and I can see that. I can see the profile of a, of a kissing gorilla. So what you do is you dig to the right of this, and there's a chance for a heart. This is actually the same formation that when we first entered into this zone. Uh, it dropped a heart. This is the exact same formation, but we're on the left side before we were on the right side. So what I need right now is a way to open this chest without being in water. Because I do not want to risk an electric stone. So we drain the water. Now we can open that. It's a coup. Eh, we don't need the coup right now. No big plans for it. See, we entered in from the left side, 
And that's where we found the heart in the uh, at the entrance. Man, we've been lucky with Uko so far. That's a formation that could have a heart. Didn't have it though. Our luck is gonna run out. There's gonna be an Uko, right? I mean, it is. It's pretty nice not running into an Uko, but it just takes one second for that to change. Because Uko comes flying in, runs dead. I cry. Bone dust? Nope, nope, nope. Well, if you're ever in the situation I'm in right now, I would recommend sticking around longer, looking for more hearts. There's no reason not to if you have good if your health's in a good place. But I do not want to bore the people watching, so we may go ahead and Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> so much about my health being in a good place. I just caught two shots in a row. But yeah, there's definitely more resources to be leached out of this level. Hmm. Eh. Alright, let's go. Probably a, a, another harder two at least, I would say. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Alright, well that's... Yeah. We just got some crazy damage. So, first things first, we grab the explosive projectiles. Then we're going to grab the black hole. And then we're going to try to roll for better perks. This has explosion immunity built into it. It's exploding corpses, but uh, we don't care so much for the exploding corpses. We want for that that uh, we want it for that amazing explosion immunity. All right. So right now if we were to put a triple here, Lumistrel here. Uh, not fast enough. Not fast enough. Let me show you what I'm doing here. Uh, we just have a spark bolt, right? Spark bolt, shoot it, it's for three damage. What I'm doing is I'm attaching ex uh, one explosive projectile to give it a little buff in damage. However, the first one takes it from three to eight. It only adds it only adds five damage, and it costs a lot of mana. Not really worth it. So from 3 damage to 8 damage, to now with 2 explosive projectiles, 330 damage. Uh, whenever it comes to understanding this mechanic, the only thing I can really recommend or try to help you to understand is that uh, the explosive projectiles are like an on and off switch. And every projectile has a certain amount of explosive projectiles that will all of a sudden flip on the damage. Spark Bolt needs two. Um, Luminous Drill just needs one. However, the reason I can't show you... Oh, actually, I can't show you. I'm explosion immune. So we fire it. Watch this. Uh, actually, I need something to hit. I guess we'll hurt the statue. Uh, you should see a blocked. Uh, if I do it right. See how it says block? That's because we are explosion immune. Um, that that would normally hurt us because of the explosion. It does a lot of damage. It would have insta-killed us there. However, double explosive projectile on a spark bolt is not dangerous. The explosion, I mean, it can ignite me, it can burn me a little bit, like, like so, but it can't hurt me from the explosion, which is a, a big deal because it adds quite a bit of damage. So I can't utilize that very well because the right now these uh, explosions are also attaching to the chainsaw when it wraps, and that will burn me quite a bit. So this, this is going to be our future of our build right here, uh, but for now let's go ahead and just attach the uh, the chain bolts and stick with what we got. Uh, oh yeah, the damage plus two. But we have potential for good stuff. Got some pretty decent build going right now. Let's just grab the heal and push on. You'll probably notice that I'm picking up the pace, uh, or I'll pick up the pace a little bit the further I go. Especially in this level. Because uh, this level I feel like offers... The, the the loot that it offers compared to the risk that's involved, uh, it's not worth. It's not worth hanging around very much. We are explosion immune though, so that really makes this area a lot safer than it, than it would be without it. 
But still, I'm not a huge fan. Um, Alright, how can we... Alright, we have to dig below this. To open it. Uh, it dropped flum. The audio is very crispy right now. Crispy in the sense that it is not good. <laughs> it is like crunchy. Crispy crunchy. That happens. Oh, especially with chainsaws. Uh, oh, this is uh, quite the interesting setup here. Invisib uh, invisible spell, which is a, a glimmer, removes castellate. However, we have a chainsaw, which removes all castellate from a wand when you use it correctly. So normally, I'd be pretty excited for this, uh, but this one situation, not like super hyped for it. In fact, I just realized I need to put up... I need to put up some stuff. Oh, he just killed the healer. Get rid of that. Okay, use the correct one, please. So we are we're getting ready to turn in our uh, broken wands, but it's important. It's important that we have space for it, and we need to have space for empty spells uh, as well, but. We don't really have Teleportadium to get the bonus spells that you can get from this level, so two should be enough for the shop. Okay, so what I wanted to show you real quick was the triplicate with the explosive projectile. With one, it does not, it goes from, it normally does 15 damage to now it does 30. That's not having the, the damage flipped on for the triplicate. However, two does do the damage. Watch it now. It goes from 15 regularly to 30 with one explosive projectile to 990 with two explosive projectiles. Again, this is our future of our build right here. Um, you could use it now if you really wanted to, but uh, I, I, I mean, our, our, we're, we're already getting by with what we got, and our, what we currently have is much more spammy. The other one is kind of slow. But if we find a good enough wand, we can we can build on it instead of having to use this. Oh, I forgot. I probably should grab a luminous drill real quick to check that. Hold up. Uh, all right, just smack this luminous drill on there. All right, so we could telly into that box, but if it drops an electric stone, it could kill us. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a luminous drill from below. Uh, it just dropped gold. We're not really that interested in gold, but if we really wanted it, uh, oh wait, we'd have to wait for the gold to despawn to even teleport in there. I guess we could show it though. Let's see if I can get it real quick. Uh, we as I, as it was despawning. <gasps> I just soft locked myself almost if I if I didn't have a luminous drill. So let me let me show you actually. This is a perfect moment to show you something. So let's pretend I did not have this luminous drill, because I, I can dig out right now with the luminous drill. But let's pretend that I just used the telly trick to get in here. I didn't have a luminous drill. Well, you can only really go up with that teleport trick. Uh, it doesn't really work so so well going on like left or down, and we can't go up because there's snow in the way. So you would actually soft lock, your, lock, soft lock yourself if you did this without a luminous drill. Uh, in our case though, luckily we do have this to let us free. And uh, the fix to what I was explaining right then, all you'd have to do is just be smart about it. Um, and say you're like, okay, I'm gonna teleport. I'm gonna teleport into that box. But before you do the teleport, all you gotta do is go to the top of it, clear it off. Clearing away the snow, which I have a feeling a ton of people are doing this uh, this time of year. Alright. Get rid of the snow and all that garbage. And then, uh, pretend this, this gap wasn't there. Then whenever you teleport in, like so, you can just teleport out just as easy. So yeah. Use that carefully. Don't get yourself stuck. Two healers. Now that's a good setup. All you gotta do is kick one of the healers. And the other one, uh, oh, well, well, normally the other one will come to heal him uh, pretty quickly. Let's see. That's not cool. 
Give me a moment. I'm trying to leave the healers alive. There we go. So you kick one, kick the other, and you just stay between them. There you go, free heals. You can do that forever. Ooh, a heart there. Nice. Perfect timing, too, because we carry these healers over here. Where are you going to go, healers? Come on. All right, screw it. We'll kick them. Kick. Be very careful when kicking your objects like that box. Because if, if it hits them, it could kill you. Like, or I mean, it, it could kill the, the healer. Oh my god. They're just being difficult. Oh, wait, I'm, I'm maxed. Duh. That's, oh. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about the homing on my shot. Uh, healers are dead now. That's a very dangerous tank that we, uh, we were shooting at right there. That tank, whenever it explodes, it really explodes. And whenever it shoots, it pumps damage. So be very careful. Uh, we're almost to the bottom right, though. We're very... We're, we're, getting, we're getting close. Almost there. Alright, we made it to the bottom right. This is where the anvil is, where you take the broken wands to. Alright. Get over here. Alright, broken wand number one. Yep. Pretty awesome stats. Pretty damn awesome. Oh, I forgot to put the Luminous Drill up after doing that whole... Showing you what the hell was going on there. Alright, well, broken wand number two. Be very careful and hide whenever you throw those in there, by the way. Ooh, which one's better? Seven capacity, this one's eight capacity. This one has better stats, but it doesn't matter because our chainsaw is good enough to manipulate all the both of the stats. We can take to zero on both of these wands. But we'll take the one with the higher capacity. We need the digging though. Please hold. I'll, I'll grab that on our way out. Oh, look at this guy. Anytime you see wands, you want to get rid of them as soon as possible. Do not let enemies with wands stand around for too long. Because they'll find a way to kill you. They always do. Uh, Venomous Curse. If we were planning to do like an all boss run, that would be uh, something that could be interesting. So we're going to check alongside this, this right wall to see if a shop spawned on it. Because it'll spawn either on the right side or the left side. Always. Also be careful of these lamps. Uh, you'll notice that I, when I'm teleporting I'm trying to be cautious of them. They can electrocute you and they can cost you your life. Uh, at one point they actually used to do a, a lot more damage than they do now. I, uh, I was one shot by one of those lamps before. We're talking like 400 HP one shot by a lamp. Or a light or whatever you want to refer to it as. Oh, okay. But now they mainly just stun you and do a, a tad bit of damage. Though they may still have the potential to hit you for some really good damage. But it's, it's supposed to be less likely to happen. Alright, so we checked the whole right wall and I did not see an entrance to a shop. That means it's on the left side. So, we have quite the journey to make here. I was thinking maybe we just leave the shop, but what if there's somebody out there that's never seen the shop and they're curious what it looks like? Oh, there's Polymorph there. We are not going to go over the Polymorph. Screw that. No way. Right, and we're almost back. Hold on. Wow. There's another one of those CEOs. Gobbled him up. Get that lamp away from me. Okay. So, Lumis Drill we put up. And is there anything worth dropping? We don't need the egg. Actually, we don't need the lightning either. Yeah, that'll work. Please?
I'm really fastly uh, just trying to get to the, the bottom. There we go. Because we still have to make a venture adventure all the way to the far left side now, because I know the the right side didn't have the shop. The anvil is always right in the same spot, but the shop shop there's some variety on that one. So you could go along the bottom here. And it's not a guaranteed death or anything, but I feel like the likelihood of you getting caught by something, it goes up tremendously whenever you're 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 at the bottom. Because enemies are always like jumping downwards. They have a wand, they grab a wand, they jump down. It's rare they grab a wand and just like fly upwards. So I, I try to be towards the top whenever I'm exploring. Go, go to the top and then go down. Go to the, back to the top and then, you know, move, move left to right. Whatever you need to do horizontally and then go down again. Especially if you're using a, a wand that's really explosive. Because if you uh, destroy some polymorph above your head and it pours down, we're screwed. But if you destroy some polymorph below you, it's not a big deal. I mean, you don't want polymorph around the world, but if it's gonna pour somewhere, doing it below you and not walk, like you know, cascading like a waterfall on top of you, <laughs> you'd rather it just be down in a puddle. Huh. Okay. Like there's a lot of missing enemies here. I think I saw the sparkle of a wand for a moment down here to the the bottom left, and then it just it instantly vanished. Yeah, there it is. You gotta be watching for that stuff because that's how you a run gets killed. Because if it picks up something like a nuke wand or not even nuke wand, something that has a freeze on it, it'll just sit there and freeze. Like he'll shoot you, and then you're frozen, and it'll just keep shooting you, and you're frozen infinitely at that point, and you just stay there until you die. It's really fun. Definitely not frustrating at all. Oh, that's scary. Woo! Trying to make sure I don't get electrocuted. And after I just told you guys to not shoot CEOs below them, here I am shooting a CEO below them. Get rid of these damn lamps. Don't trust them. There's a canister. As you can see, we're still at the top. Which is good. Woof! Definitely getting sloppy here. Really just have to worry about the freezing vapor. The explosion's not dangerous because of the exploding corpses. Man, all that for nothing. You grab that if you're interested in doing some kind of like speed run or whatever, but I don't want to speed run my way to the end. Oh, head down now. Ow. Trying to not die here. Wow, this toxic sludge is determined. Is the look of that. That thing exploded right on me. Again, that's why I should be a little more careful, unlike me, because I'm just going nuts right now. Trying to dig around, clearing everything that I can clear. It may seem like we're in a lot of danger, we're not really in that much danger. Because we are explosion immune, and our wand does pump some serious damage. I just have to stop being sloppy with the fire and all that, and uh, we'll, we'll be fine, we'll be fine. Now, if we were not explosion immune, I'd be having a heart attack right about now. Be like, oh my god! There's explosions everywhere. Okay, as I say that... Put some ambrosia on me. You! Stop that. So, what I'm always tempted to do in situations like this, because we have a lava pit, is, uh, is to try to dive into it with the ambrosia on me. That's not a good idea. You should not try that. But it is tempting. Alright. Um, do -do 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 -do. It can definitely be scary at times, but once you play a lot of Noita, you get used to these moments where your health's pretty low, and you got ambrosia, and you're just trying to push to the next holy mountain. We can push there pretty quickly right about now. Whoop. 
Alright, some better stuff, finally. Uh, I don't know if I want any of that, but we'll grab the uh, infinite spells. I'm not a big fan. Alright, so let's build something awesome. Hmm. So, first things first, let's build with some of the new spells I've seen just chilling over here. Broom, somebody's speeding on by. Uh, there's that. Uh, we're going to put the double here now. The triple goes here. We could put... We build a wand like this if we wanted to. Pretty good wand. Definitely not bad. Check the damage. We get up to 1,010, something like that. Then the, wand, then the mana empties out for a bit. Not terrible, though. Uh, another option is that we go with the double explosive projectile triplicate whenever we shoot that. Do a solid 6,000 damage. Also good. Remember I told you that the explosive uh, projectiles would be our future. It's not joking. Uh, another option is linear arc. Linear arc is kind of like a crappier damage plus, but it costs zero mana. And while it can be awkward that it messes with the uh, formation in which your projectiles fly, you got to keep in mind that this is adding 5 damage to each one of these bullets per shot. So we're adding 15 damage a shot for 0 mana. That's that's some that's some huge value. Now yes, it does fly a little awkwardly afterwards, but as long as it's not before the trigger, that really messes with the shot when it's before the trigger. It makes it hard to aim. Like look if I tried to aim right here, you can't aim at all. But if you put it after it, we get the the damage not only that, but it'd be better after it anyways, because you want the damage to be on the uh, triplicate, like the payload. So I just want to show that off, because I know there's some new guys out there that may be interested in that. Uh, put both of these down. We don't need this. So the level that we're going into is one of my favorite for collecting resources. If you're having a hard time in Noita, especially with um, finding good wands, uh, with good stats, and finding good spells, this is the level to do it. The key is to just 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 try to have something that can dig, like you know, energy orb or pollen, whatever. This level is is very generous compared to many of the other levels. Like Hisi Base, you can just insta die to some nonsense. While well, this level, as long as you can, you know, make sure to be careful. I mean, look, you even I even found digging once I was in here. You can easily get around, traverse the level, do whatever you need to do. It has tons of hearts, tons of resources. Just It's just a great level. Uh, people ask me all the time my favorite level, and I'm like, are they asking because they're like, you know, style, like what what music and layout and looks and all that? We're just talking about the most useful, because jungle is probably the most useful. This is interesting. Oh, we cannot, we cannot mess with them. Oh, wait, we could have. I had explosion immunity. Uh, we could have used that heart mage, though, to take our health into the thousands but uh i obliterated him wait did he die oh he's alive right there oh he's explosion me and what am i thinking explosions actually heal him um let's be greedy let's go over to him and kick the wand out of his hand yeah let's be silly Just throw this extra wand to the ceiling let's see if we can do this without getting myself killed don't you do it There you go. He's alive! He's alive! Only do that if you're explosion immune. You, <laughs> I would be an instant death right there. Uh, so now what I want to do is I want to get him away from the uh, the other enemies that could potentially hurt him. Did I kill him? No, he's alive. Oops. Hold up. So that heart mage is our friend. Now, we just need to find another heart. And then we can have tons of HP. Actually, what's our current HP? Uh, well, we gotta wait for that to expire. Our current HP is 265. We can get... We can get close to... Um, we can get close to... 1,000, I think. And that's funny, I just got hit with the follow. From this M MW brother. Thanks for the follow, dude. I'm not even streaming right now. <laughs> I didn't even think to turn alerts off because I'm not live. 
Maybe it was a dude that that came over from uh from the YouTube, perhaps. Which is why I'm making this video, to show some love to the YouTube community, because I've been getting tons of love, tons of positivity from you guys, so I gotta I gotta throw some more content up for you. Can't leave you behind. If you guys don't know, most of my uh my content creating or whatever is done on Twitch. Uh, I've been streaming Noita you know for years and and I really didn't do much on my YouTube channel. And then uh, recently the YouTube algorithm just started showing my, my channel a ton of love. So then I started posting more and more and here we are. Doing an entire run to throw up on YouTube. Usually I just I just throw some Twitch VODs up. But the Twitch VODs are kind of hard to watch because you, I'm talking to Chad. There's random nonsense going on. Uh, I forgot to fill up my water flask. Whoops. Back up. Got some water here. Okay, wait, what was on this one again? Oh, yeah. Alright. Oh, there's a chest there, isn't there? More gold. Care for it. Dude, it is laggy. This level is a lag fest. Um, Alright, so now what we are about to do is we are about to spawn a dragon. This dragon right here is uh, spawns by being close to the center point. It does not matter how much of the egg you dig, it's about getting close to the center point. And the moment you get close to it, the dragon will spawn, and then we just smack him in the face because we have a ton of damage. Now that heart is what we're interested in. And that wand is actually nuts. What the hell? Oh my goodness. <laughs> My goodness, that is, that's a monster right there. This is how you build God wants, is you, you kill the dragon, you get some legit stats, and then you just go farm up resources. So we're going to grab that, give me one moment to toss away our, this wand right here, because we don't want it to be around here when we bring the heart mage over here. We want this thing out of our life. So we are going to toss it away. Now the heart mage trick is not necessary for getting a basic win. I'm mainly showing it off. Uh, at some point I may make a, a video on it, giving some, because there's some other strategies you can do with this heart mage trick. Some stuff that uh, even I don't really do on stream very often. Uh, but I haven't really taken the time to, to do a, a nice tutorial video on it. But at the very least I'll have a basic heart mage trick on this long run to to reward anybody who who actually stuck with me for this long this long run here uh, even if you maybe you were bored out of your mind you stuck with it and i appreciate you for being here now let's go find where is this oh there's oh dang actually our health is going to be nuts what the heck well this could be this could be cool wait did i pass where the heart mage is was that where the heart mage was before? I think it was. The heart mage was right next to him and I just wasn't paying attention, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to say, Here you go, friend. You can have my wand. Uh, okay, he's being difficult. Does not, does not want it. There we go. So we gave him our teleport wand. The reason for that is because we want our friend to follow us. And it makes it really easy when you hand him a tele wand. He just warps over to you. So, when you want the wand back, though... Okay, hold on. Get over here. When you want the wand back, you are going to have to kick him. Are you kidding me? Oh! Make sure you don't have chainsaws or anything on your, your telly wand here. So, I kick. He coughs up my wand. There we go. I put Ambrosia on myself. He hits me. So, now my health, every time he hits me, is getting halved. There we go. Once my health is below 10... Right there, it does not help. It does not help to get hit by the heart mage anymore. So we are going to let our. Oh, hello there, friend. Let our health restore. Like so. Now our total health is 1065. Keep in mind that every time the heart mage hits us, it halves our current health. So, 
if we get hit, it goes from like, so we have a thousand. If we get hit, it goes to 500. We get hit again, 250. We get hit again, 125. Well, during this time that our health is getting halved and halved and halved, if we pick up a heart that's worth 25, that's worth 25 health. Well, then as they start to expire, that 25 health, it doubles once. So that 25 health was now 50 health. It doubles again. That 50 was now 100 health. It doubles again. 200 health doubles again 400 so it, it that's the key though the key thing to remember is that once you're once you're whenever you're getting hit once your total health bar is goes below 10 doesn't matter how many more times you get hit uh, at least as far as i'm aware that's how the devs nerfed it they did they are aware of this and it's not like a, a, a at this point it's not really a glitch because it is like an approved mechanic like the devs uh, made some changes to it, and this is how it exists in the game uh, after they've made changes to it. Used to, you could take your health from like 10 health to, uh, you know, 50,000. Like, it, it didn't matter. Like, you go nuts with it. Uh, but now, it's uh, it's just like you can get uh, like a 1,000 from it, which is still pretty crazy. Uh, okay, so we throw our friend the wand again, and we continue our journey. The scariest thing that we have to worry about is fire. Fire scales with your health. So, our health is very high meaning we are going to get burned very badly. <laughs> so the other heart we left was at the dragon. Shot, 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 shot. Okay. He wants to go this route. Does this route work? Kind of does. No, it does not. He chose poorly. I could probably use my wand with the explosions on it to dig safely because it shouldn't kill him. Uh, however, the reason I'm not doing it is because there is a little bit of regular damage on it. Which could, if it, if it hit him just right and crit, it could actually kill him, I think. But why risk it? Oh, get over here. But yeah, Make sure you do not have any damage on this wand. I've seen people get themselves killed by having chainsaws or something on this wand and forgetting about it because they build like a, a fast teleport wand and then and then the when they give it to the mage the mage will just murder them so we got a kick it's gonna be tricky we gotta get them caught in a corner otherwise it's very annoying oh let go i said all right so let's see how many hits we can get on us here before we drop below 10 hp um I'm actually going to let him hit me one more time, just for safe measure. Alright. And let's see if I even am able to kill that guy, if we wanted to. Doesn't seem like it. Uh, I think the last one may not count, let's see. Yeah, last one didn't count because we were below that 10 health threshold when we got hit. So we are now up to 4000 HP. Pretty good. Pretty nice. Uh, so I'm just going to leave this area early. I know I just I talked up the level quite a bit, talking about how there's great resources and all that. And that's true. Uh, but in this case, I can't really show it off too much because I can burn myself to death very quickly. Uh, but if you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more on this uh, kind of runs, then in my future run, I probably won't do that trick every time. So then somebody could uh, get a better look at what the jungle offers and how to find good wands and all that stuff in it. But yeah, now we have 4,000 health. This is something you would do if you were going to do a, a really long run. I would strongly recommend that. It makes things way easier, way faster. Uh, so we're going to toss all this stuff away. Uh, do, 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 do. Alright, uh, so this one's going to be weird. We don't need the double. Spark timer, damage, damage, this... Uh, let's put a triple, put some spark bolts on there. And remember, it's an always cast two, two cast. So, if we really wanted to speed it up, we could add this there, and it uh, goes really fast. Well, you know what? I think because the stats are so good, I may be okay with it just firing like this. Seems pretty reasonable to me. Uh, quad goes here. Can we put some other stuff? Let's see. One, two, three. We don't have an extra projectile for it. Makes me sad. Oops, did not mean to throw that. Let's see that. Hold on, let's see if we can find that extra projectile. Oh, there's none. Oh well, we'll just run with these five. Uh, if you're curious on a date, you want a damage check real quick? 
Let me show you on the statue. Is that 8,000? 12,000? We can do a lot of damage. A single shot I doesn't do as much as that, but you know, it does some good damage. Look at that fire. Look at that fire burning. That fire really burns. Uh, roll this. Come on. Give me fire immunity game. I'm not going to grab the gamble. Gamble's way too high risk. Not worth it. Um, we could grab some gold and come back there if we would like, but just being a basic run, just to fill things out to see what you guys think of doing these runs on YouTube. Uh, I won't take the time to farm it and make you watch all that. We're just going to go ahead and clear our way through the vault and hopefully not burn ourselves to death. Some people avoid these kind of wands whenever they don't have fire immunity, and I don't blame you. But I feel like the more you play, you'll get quicker at putting out uh, your character when they're on fire. You'll notice that I pour the water and I fly up into it. Usually puts out the fire decently quick. And as you can see, I mean, we are we are deadly as hell. Oops, there goes a the fire right there. Alright. Get out of here. You always love the music in this level though. It's always popping. What was that down there? Berserkium? Eh. It is annoying how you can't see very well with uh, once the explosions, you know, hit the steel. It pretty much darkens it in a way that it blends in with the background. Nope. It was a sh If you're curious how I glanced at that so fast, it just... I, so when you're walking up to it, if there is no, uh, like, white white clump on the wand, like, if you look here, there's a, like, a, a white... It's supposed to be, like, a gem. Uh, in this case, you'll see a little yellow gem. I think it's yellow on some of these, too. It's just a, a clump on the wand. That shows that it is a non-shuffle. There is no clump of a specific color, like yellow or white. So it's a, it's a shuffle wand. So walking up to it, I already knew it's going to be a shuffle. So what I do, uh, how I'm able to check so fast, is that as I'm walking at it, my brain's like, all right, well, I'm already, I already don't care about the stats because it's, it's a shuffle, so that means it's no good to us. But I do want to check the spells. And I go, oh, oh no, I don't want those spells. <laughs> They're just missiles. Not interested. I figure I should explain that in case there's somebody out there that's like, how the hell does he glance over every stat on the wand so quickly? Because I already knew the main stat walking up to it before I even... Before I even picked it up. Uh, there's, so we just clear through the, the vault like it's nothing. The world is a joke. We're murdering them all. Uh, we'll grab the, the toxic immunity here because toxic immunity, like fire immunity, does scale. So uh, we don't have to worry about that crap. Now the thing to worry about is Polymorph. Polymorph is how we lose this run. Uh, I don't think anything else besides Polymorph. Well, I guess a wand. If there's some kind of wand combo that an enemy picks up, that's really dangerous, but... Yeah. See, I'm not, I don't even care about the reflecting enemy. It's just like... You got nothing. This is the power of the Heart Mage. And there are Heart Mages that spawn in other places, too. Like this, you can find it in this level. There could be more Heart Mages. That's a Polymorph guy. Chaotic Poly guy, in fact. Just showering in damage for everyone. You get some damage, and you get some damage. Keep in mind that polymorph shots can come in from off screen. So whenever you're going around, try not to idle around like this too much because the shot will just go whoop. I, I tend to kind of move in a, a little bit of a zigzag, not constant, but it just just keep moving, I guess, is the idea. It doesn't have to be necessarily a certain formation. Just, just keep moving. Uh, I feel like a lot of times when I die to poly, uh, it's whenever I idle for a moment. Like, I'll, I'll be clearing something, then I'll kind of stand, then a shot goes boom and hits me in the back. Because it happens so fast. I mean, you got like a less than a second to respond. And if you're kind of daydreaming for a moment, you're done. Nothing interesting. See, look, no, no gym on it. Uh, so instantly I knew it was a shuffle and I do not need those spells, so nothing to get excited about.
We're almost there. We had to be pretty darn close. Yep, there it is. Uh, you know, again, we, we, we bypass these last two levels pretty quickly just because I don't I don't want to force you guys to watch something where you're like, all right, I know he already won this because his health is crazy and he has such good spells. Uh, but maybe maybe if you guys say you like this and you leave lots of uh, um, like comments, like like feedback, so that I know what I need to improve on, then uh, then on the longer run, I'll take the time, slow it down because it's necessary in those runs, right? Like, because we're actually going to do like let's say let's say we we plan to do a sun quest. Well, I would need the better resources for the sun quest, so it makes sense to play those levels slower. But for this run, as our as our test to you know fill out things and see how how much you guys enjoy it, we'll just uh, we bypass those levels pretty much. We just destroyed our way through it, and uh, let's grab close call and let's just go smack the boss around, okay? Uh, one thing to keep in mind about this boss fight, I brought it up at the very beginning beginning of this run, is I said I grabbed an orb, and because of that, the boss will be slightly different, right? And what it is, is when I grab this, pick the salt up, you're going to notice the boss has a purple shield. If you shoot into the purple shield, it does not hurt him and he catches the shots. But it, when his shield goes down, you can hit him directly. Shields up, can't hurt him. Shield down, blow him up. Now, that may, I mean, that may seem like it's like, okay, whatever, it's so simple. If you build a very good wand, that is a super dangerous mechanic because I've seen it happen before. Uh, people build like a concentrated spells wand where every one of their projectile is hitting for like, you know, 2,000 damage. Well, the boss spawns in, they hold down their shots, the boss catches them all, and then throws them right back in their face. Now, for this one, it was kind of hard for the boss to throw it back into my face because of the way it works. But uh, many other projectiles, the boss can easily catch them and throw them back at you. Meaning, you were trying to hit the boss for 2,000 damage, well, instead, the boss will hit you for 2,000 damage, and boom. And a lot of time, that's an insta-death, right? Because you don't always have over 2,000 HP. Uh, so there we go. We've killed the boss. This is our basic win. Let's go ahead and uh, lock it in and see if I can outrun the death circle. So this is something that the chat always gives me a hard time that I do. Uh, because it's just it's just outrunning the death circle. There really there is no reason to do this. There is no like special unlock or anything like that that I can think of. Uh, but the reason I do it is because I think one of the coolest places in the game is uh, once you have turned the world to gold. If you go visit the Dark Sun, which is a quest that you have to do in the game, or not have to, I mean, if you want to, it's one of the unlocks in the game. Um, it's not like you need to unlock the spell. The spell really is just, you know, goofy nonsense. But uh, you do it because it's a challenge, right? The Sun Quest is one of the most uh, the challenging and longest quests in the game. And if you do it, you will permanently have a Dark Sun in all your future runs. So, what we are doing is we are visiting the Dark Sun as it is in Hell. It won't look like Hell because the whole area is uh, is solid gold and all enemies are, are dead because, you know, the world is completely gold. But, we, uh, we drop down on the right side of Hell. You'll free fall for a bit and then you're going to hit this platform. This platform is the Hell Shop. This is normally where you would go to buy these uh, a lot of these late game tier spells. If you, if you don't find them in the run, you can find a lot of them in Hell. And you can build some god wands using them. These, this is only used for longer runs. Not something that you would do in a basic run, uh, because if you can survive all the way down here in hell, then you're just fine. You're, you're, you're you don't need to go down here for a basic win. But for those long runs, you'll see players do this quite a bit. So just keep free falling. It may seem like it's infinite. It is infinite if you go past the hell. Like you can keep going past this further and further. But uh, we don't care to go past this. We are just going for the uh, the shop that. Uh, we're about to arrive at uh, right now. So this shop, there it is. So you can see there's the hell shop. These aren't really the greatest spells that we're seeing. I was hoping to see some really cool spells. So people were like, oh, there, there you go. There's Sigma. That's not that cool. Uh, but there's, there, yeah, there's the Moo. That's a, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. That one's not too exciting. Go to the left side over here. See, there's one of the divide buys. There's all kinds of late game spells here. Very useful place to go to. But it's also where the Dark Sun is once you have created it. And you will hear it when I get near it, don't worry. You'll know it's there. So the sun is right below us, you can hear us, uh, hear it very clearly. 
Uh, we've already got the win, so at this point you just need to die so that the credits will roll. Uh, keep in mind that we ran a double explosive projectile wand, but that was in if somebody says, oh, well, you got lucky because you got a double explosive projectile wand. We could have easily tossed both of those away, just ran a damage plus horizontal uh, linear arc uh, build on this. Still would have been super destructive. Uh, if somebody says, well, okay, then you got lucky on the triple K, you got lucky on the damage plus. We also had a ghost wand that we tossed away because I was like, eh, that's too easy. So there's tons of options to win uh, when you're playing Noita. There's always a route. The, the key is just don't give in, stay alive. As you saw the beginning of the run, the beginning of the run, you know, it looked, it looked sketchy as hell, right? Like the run was, you know, you're thinking, oh, this run is done. Well, here we are with over 4,200 uh, HP. We got the W. We're doing thousands of damage, and we're, we're having to kill ourselves in the dark sun because we're that strong. Oh, yeah, and we had an extra life, too. Small bonus. And that's the dark sun. Uh, if you're curious about the dark sun quest, like I said, if you guys enjoyed this, I mean, at some point, I may do a full dark sun quest for YouTube, where I just rant on it, rant what I'm doing, talk about strategies and all that. Uh, but I, I don't want to start off by doing a long run like that, because I don't know if you guys are interested in this. Maybe you guys are more just about the tutorials, which is understandable, right? Like, you, you just you let me know which content you prefer, and then that's what we'll go with, because I have a ton of fun making it. I have a ton of fun just discussing Noita, which is why I live stream it every day. And I know that you're all more than welcome to stop by my, uh, my Twitch channel. You can hit me with a follow. The link will be down in the uh, description below. Uh, I stream just about every day. Sometimes I don't play Noita. Sometimes I play other stuff. But Noita is definitely the game I play the most. I have over... Uh, I think I've, I've... I have... What's my hours in the game now? It's around 4,000 hours now. Somewhere around there. And, um... Yeah, so uh, we... And that, all those have been uh, pretty much live streamed on Twitch. Uh, and one, one last thing I guess I should uh, explain. Uh, a lot of people who watch me on my Twitch will know that I never get wins outside of Twitch. Every single win I've gotten, all my stats, is done live on stream. Well, what I did before uh, before this run began is I, I pressed uh, F11 so I could go to my directory, and there is a save right here, save 00. What I did is I copied it right here, this one is uh, before, this is the save before I did this run. The reason that's important is because I'm going to be able, after I you know, post this video, I can just revert my stats and still uh, my stats are, uh, you know, the same. Every, every win I've ever gotten will be uh, live on stream. It will be back to 1,230 wins. So don't, don't worry, Twitch chat, I have not betrayed you, but I did need to show some love to the YouTube community after all the love the YouTube community has shown to me. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the rants. Hopefully it didn't put you to sleep, or maybe it did. Maybe that's what your goal was with watching the stream. Maybe you wanted to go to sleep. Uh, nonetheless, thanks for all the love and support, you guys. And uh, yeah, I'll post another video soon. Just let me know uh, what you guys liked, what you didn't like. Deuces.